Hi, this is Jeff Linderman with Go Engineer. I'm an applications engineer specializing in the SOLIDWORKS Plastic Simulation software. Welcome to my video on What's New 2020 in SOLIDWORKS Plastics. This year SOLIDWORKS is focusing on another customer project, the OMAX WaterJet CNC machine. The OMAX WaterJet CNC machine is designed using SOLIDWORKS. The key to this machine is performance. SOLIDWORKS brings enhancements dedicated to performance focused on getting tasks done quickly and easily. The 2020 release of SOLIDWORKS Plastics introduces a new workflow to the injection molding study setup. The changes make the setup more like other SOLIDWORKS simulation packages. The mesh creation step has been streamlined and the auto mesh is more robust with better auto refinement output. In 2019, the geometry based boundary conditions were introduced. And there have been several other geometry based boundary conditions added to the latest release. These include clamp force, symmetry face, insert settings, air vents, exclude from warp, and coolant input. These new changes speed up the setup process and eliminate repetitive steps if there are changes made to the model. In this video, I will go through the new workflow and point out the new features of 2020. The new enhancements I'll be covering in this video are the new study button, the domains node, geometry-based boundary conditions, and the streamlined mesh workflow, the new cooling analysis, the material library updates, and added tutorials into the system. So the part we will be using for this video is part of this control panel on the OMAX machine. I will pick the bottom section of this part and we'll utilize SOLIDWORKS mold tools to create our mold components that we're going to run the analysis on. So we'll have an A side and B side or core and cavity sides modeled in water lines and a side core that will specify the domains. So when we look at our part model, you can see that it's a multi-body part with bodies that represent components in the mold, water channels, and our cavity. The first thing you notice when you start the plastics add-in is that you select new study from the command manager to start a new study on the current configuration. This is similar to the workflow as other SOLIDWORKS simulation packages. The addition of the domains node in the plastics tree allows for the part bodies to be included in the analysis to be assigned prior to the meshing step. This allows for easier changes without having to reassign items every time the model is meshed. We can see as we assign our mold domains, we can actually assign a second material domain for the mold insert. And we'll also get assign our water channels as cooling channels in the analysis. Now that we've set our domains, the next step is to set boundary conditions. In 2020, SOLIDWORKS has added additional boundary conditions such as injection location, control valve, mold wall temperature, clamp force, air vents, exclude from warp, filled hot runner, and coolant input. The first boundary condition we'll set is our injection location. We have the options of setting off geometry face or a point on our model. In this model, we've got a split line that indicates our injection location, so we'll use the geometry face condition. Our next boundary condition we're going to set is going to be our clamp force direction. When we select clamp force direction, this is going to calculate the clamp force it takes to hold the mold closed during the injection cycle. We also have an option to exclude regions from the calculations, such as these faces that are part of the side action slide core. One boundary condition included in 2020 is the exclude from warp boundary condition. This allows us to select portions of the model that we want to exclude from the warp analysis, such as runner systems or additional cavities. 
Our next input is the coolant input. The coolant analysis enhancement in 2020 introduces a new turbulence model that calculates the flow of the coolant in the cooling circuits. Cool simulations are more accurate using this new model. With this new model, the previous solver's cool flow field, cool pipe, and cool entrance are eliminated. This makes sense because why wouldn't you always want to use the most accurate solver anyway? So now we'll set our coolant input conditions. First, we'll select our inlets and outlets on our cooling lines. And then we can also set our flow rates and temperature of the water going through the circuit. Now that our domains and boundary conditions are set, we'll look at the mesh enhancements for SOLIDWORKS 2020. The entire meshing process has been streamlined to simplify mesh creation. The solid meshing steps have changed from eight steps down to just three. The mesh refinement tools are still there when additional mesh refinements are needed, and the automatic solid mesh workflow has been enhanced to create hybrid meshes instead of hexahedral meshes. For this model, we'll create tetrahedral hybrid mesh. The mesh steps are pretty simple. Refinement method I want to use on this is going to be a curvature based refinement. Since I have a lot of radial bosses and water lines modeled, it'll capture the geometry much more accurately. If I need to go into advanced mesh control and do further refinements, I can. With the refinement method selected, when I create the surface mesh, we can see that I've got refinements around my water lines and all my radiuses and the bosses on my model. Our next step is going to be create the internal solid mesh. I can simply click on the create button and we can see our mesh internally meshed all around the water lines in the model. Our next step is going to be to set our material parameters. You can right click on polymer and open the polymer database. There are over 4,000 materials in the SOLIDWORKS plastics database. In this case, I'm going to select a PC ABS material I'll select the material type, scroll down, and find the material I want and select it as well. I'm going to select a Cycloloy C2950. Now that we've got our polymer selected, let's select our coolant, which in this case is going to be water, and then we can go into our mold material selection. Remember, we set up two domains for our mold. One was for the insert and one was for the mold. I'll select A2 tool steel for the mold insert. And then we'll scroll through and find beryllium copper for our side core. This will help with the cooling on this since we have no water line directly on this cooling insert. If by chance our material that we want is not in the database, SOLIDWORKS Plastics has a user-defined database that allows us to actually import materials into the database. The SOLIDWORKS technical team has been working with material manufacturers of late and have created a new way to input new materials. By adding a material database in the 3D Content Central, we can actually go in and find injection molding materials that material manufacturers have been placing into 3D Content Central. This allows us to go in and find any new materials without having to wait for the next service pack or the next major release. We simply scroll through and find if our material we're looking for is in this database, and then we can select to download the SOLIDWORKS Plastics material data. And then we can simply turn around import back into the SOLIDWORKS database and we'll have our material there. Now that we've got our material selected, the next step would be to go to our process parameters and enter any of our filling, packing, or, or cooling settings. We can simply right click on any of the settings, open the settings tab, and make any changes we need to make off of the default values that actually come from the material database. In this case, we'll leave our defaults. With all of our process parameters set, our next step will be to run our analysis. Since we're running a cooling analysis along with all of the other features, we want to run cool, flow, pack, and warp. 
Now with the analysis complete, we can go in and open our results and look at some of the results. First, we'll look at our flow results on our model. We can look at the fill time results and animate this and, and see the material as it fills the cavity going through on our model. We can use this to look for weld lines and air traps or short shots in our models. Next, we'll flip over to the cool results and look at our pure cooling time for our model. Another thing we can look at is our cycle average mold temperature. This allows us to look for hot spots in our model. Since this analysis is a full 3D CFD, we can actually look at pressure in the coolant lines and velocity vectors on our coolant flows. Now we'll switch over to our warp results and we can look at things such as total stress displacement. We can do these in the X, Y, and Z directions. This allows us to look at warpage and shrinkage on our models. Since we have warp results on our model, we can actually right click on our warp results and create a SOLIDWORKS body from the deformed model. This would allow us to actually save this as a SOLIDWORKS part file, place it into an assembly, and check for clearances or interferences. The SOLIDWORKS technical team has added tutorials to SOLIDWORKS Plastics. There are seven lessons that walk you through the setup and running of SOLIDWORKS Plastics simulations. This will be a good resource for those of learning the SOLIDWORKS Plastics simulation software. As we've seen the new workflow for SOLIDWORKS Plastics 2020, we've seen the new study tab, the domains node and geometry-based boundary conditions that are set before the, the streamlined mesh workflow, a new cool analysis solver, and continual material library updates going into SOLIDWORKS 3D Content Central, as well as the addition of tutorials for those learning the SOLIDWORKS Plastic Simulation software. This concludes my video on a deeper dive into SOLIDWORKS Plastics 2020. This has been Jeff Linderman with Go Engineer. Thank you.